Good morning, geometry students. Today we're going to be talking about rotations. So we have a CUDA software infinite geometry worksheet that we're going to be working off of. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. So the first question asks us to do a rotation of 180 degrees about the origin. So there's a couple things we need to understand about rotations before we proceed. Number one, any positive rotation or the counterclockwise direction uh, is going that way. So this is counterclockwise. And then, of course, the opposite is going to be true. So a negative degree rotation is going to be going clockwise. All right. Now, the last thing we need to know is it's very useful for the coordinate plane to do these rotations or to have the coordinate plane because if we were to just connect these two dots okay from the origin to the point let's start with point f for example just looking at the diagram and figuring out where 180 degrees is it's it's tough without a protractor okay so we need to use a method that employs the given lines. So because these uh, vertical gridded pattern lines act along the x and y axis, the x direction, y direction, vertical and horizontal are given, it makes it much easier to see what's 180 degrees and what's 90 degrees, etc. Okay, so each one of these spaces is a 90 degree rotation. And I, right now I'm going in the clockwise, which is negative 90. I don't know why I did that, but you get the point. Okay, so each one of these spaces is uh, 90 degrees in between. And that's true because they make a little right angle. Okay, so let's try to get to point F using the vertical and horizontal lines available. So we're going to start with the origin. And I'm going to travel horizontally first. Now, I talk about this in some of my other videos, but it doesn't really matter if you go vertical or horizontal first. Like, for example, if I wanted to get to point F, I really could go to the vertical spot first and then work horizontally from there. But I'm just going to show you an example where I go horizontally first. So I go horizontally one, two, three, four spaces. And now if I'm going to rotate this line, this green little segment here, 180 degrees, it's much easier to see. So I'm going to go in the positive 180 degrees direction. Now it doesn't matter. It doesn't tell you clockwise or counterclockwise because you're going to get to the same point. 180 degree rotations, um, if, even if you go counterclockwise or clockwise, you arrive at the same location. Okay, so I'm going to go 180 degrees this way. Now it's much easier to see. So if I go 90, I'm going to get here, and then 180 would take me here. One, two, three, four spaces. Okay, I'm going to erase this so it doesn't interfere. So this is clearly a 180 degree rotation. Okay, so, but that's not the point we're looking for. We're not looking for this location and moving it over here. We want to see where point F is, and point F isn't exactly where that is. So how do I get to F from the end of this segment? Well, i got to go up two units. Okay. So now I'm rotating this huge L, this L shape that looks like this. I'm rotating at two units. So anytime you create these little L shapes, I call them supports to get to your point. So here's my point F. And here's my origin. Origin. Anytime I rotate it, you're gonna see it maintains. So this is 90. Notice how the the green line's straight down, and now the orange line's pointed to the left. Let me go to 180. So now as I go to 180, oops, sorry. Notice how it's going to the right, just like I showed here with this dotted line, and then my orange line is pointed down two units because it's got to maintain the same distance if this was four units to the left this has got to be four units to the right if this is two units up this has got to be two units down 
Okay, so that's 180 degree rotation. So now we have our new location of F prime. Now we just repeat this whole process with each one of these points. So I'm going to erase all this. I'm going to show you what it looks like for, let's say, point N. Point N is pretty close, so this one's going to be a little easier. So before, I went horizontally first, and then I went vertical down. I'm just going to show you that you can go vertical first. It doesn't really matter, as long as you maintain the relationship. So I'm going vertical down, and I'm going to go horizontal, because I still need to get to point N. So that's one unit to the left. This is two units down. Now what happens if I rotate this guy 180 degrees? Well, let's use this one as an example. Even though it's not point F, we're going to use this as an example. So imagine this is point N. Actually, let me just change it to point N. So that's still my origin. Oops. I'll change the color. Why not? Here's point N. Now, I need to rotate this 180 degrees. This is why the lines are so useful. So if I'm rotating this 100 degrees, there's 90, there's 180. So I know it's going to be pointing up like this, two units. Okay, let me just show you what that looks like now. Which direction is this orange line facing? As I rotate it 180 degrees, it should be pointing up. Oops, didn't snap into place. I'm trying to get that going. Sometimes this can be a little tricky. Okay. I'll give it one more shot. Okay, so anyway, I'm gonna just hold it. So as it's pointing straight up, oh, there it goes. Notice how it's now pointing to the right instead of to the left, but it's still the same distance. It's still one unit. Okay, so that's still one unit, and this is still two units. So I need to move this horizontal support over one unit, and there is my new point n prime. Let me go ahead and just to be thorough, I'll go ahead and do the other two points quickly. So let's see point P, I'll go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go vertical first. Uh, let's stay consistent. I want to use the solid line first. So solid line up first to get to point P. I need one unit over to the right to get there. And if I rotate this 180 degrees, Instead of pointing up, I'm going to be pointing down. How many units? Four. One, two, three, four. Instead of pointing to the right, I'm going to be pointing to the left. And there's point P prime. And lastly, K. This one's actually going to be easy. I'm actually glad this is an example. So with point K, notice how it's right on the x-axis. So if I go from the origin... Oops. If I go from the origin over to K, notice how I get to K without an additional support. I only need this horizontal one. There's the origin. It connects exactly to K. So now I just need to rotate this 180 degrees. So as I rotate this 180 degrees, sorry, trying to be accurate here. Notice how I get to my new point, K prime, without an additional support. That one's probably a little bit easier to visualize. So now I have all my points rotated, and I just need to connect the dots. Oh, where's this guy? Oh, he's over here. And that is my 180 degree rotation. So I hope you found this helpful. There's obviously a lot more problems. These other ones, uh, 90 degrees counterclockwise. Just keep in mind, 90 degrees counterclockwise is going to be uh, counterclockwise, whoops, that's clockwise. That's the same thing as a positive 90 degree rotation. Also keep in mind, just for reference, a positive 90 degree rotation is the same thing as a negative 270 degree rotation. Because I know some of you probably like to use that chart that offers you the X and Y coordinate differences. But um, I just wanted to use see that for reference. But anyway, hope you found this video useful and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your